you, not you, not you. Nope. Nope. I'm gonna be my own bank. I'm not banking with you. Uninterrupted compound interest. Start your infinite banking policy today. Bye bye, big banks. All right, folks, what we're going to do is we're going to talk about retirement. We get this question a lot. A lot of people obviously are out there thinking about retiring these days. Not a bad topic, not a bad thing. I hope you guys like the little intro that we just did there for you. But what we're going to do is we're going to get into retirement planning. And I'm going to show you a little bit about, you know, what some people would call, you know, the perfect retirement plan. What does a perfect retirement plan look like? Well, it's going to look different to everybody. But I bet you all of you at one point or another have had an idea of what a perfect retirement might, might look like. And that's what we want to talk about today. We want to talk a little bit about that retirement plan. And I want to show you what people often will say to me, because they'll often tell me this is a perfect retirement plan. It would be, it would be guaranteed. Okay. I wouldn't have to take on risk, but I would have good growth. It would be something that I could access and use, even if I'm not 59 and a half without penalties. It would have this, it would have that. They go through this entire long thing with me and they explain exactly what retirement would look like. And you know what? When I'm all done, I'm like, wow, that sounds pretty darn good. And you know what they say to me? They say, yeah, that would be amazing, but that sounds too good to be true. How many of you have ever thought that retirement in your perfect sense, sounds too good to be true. Well, it may be, or maybe it's not. And that's what I want to talk about. I want to talk a little bit about a retirement plan. I want to talk about what a retirement plan could actually look like for you. And I want to show you how that plan will look. So let me just share a couple screens here, and then we're going to dive into this. And I'm going to show you what we call SLURP, okay? Supplemental life insurance, retirement planning, but I'm going to show how we do this using privatized banking. Now, all of you heard one word in that entire thing, right? You heard slurp, but then what was the one or two words that you heard? You heard life insurance and immediately you wanted to tune out. But if you tune out now, you're going to miss the best part of this entire show. And let me just kind of give you a sampling of what I mean by that. So I'm going to share my screen and we're going to go through, we're going to look at several slides, several examples of how this works, but I'm gonna start with my plan and I wanna show you what my plan looks like. So if this was my retirement plan, some things that I would want from my retirement plan, which this is, is I'd want a plan that allowed me to access and use my money anytime I want. I don't wanna wait till 59 and a half. I'm 43 now and I want retirement to be every single day that I can live my perfect day. I don't wanna to have to wait to some fictitious day in the future to do that. But you're just going to see the numbers on the screen. And we're going to look at a lot of numbers because we do kind of have to pick a day when we're going to retire. Now, for some of you, it might be before 59 and a half. Some of you, you might say, well, I'm going to wait till 62 because that's when I can start taking Social Security. And then some of you are going to say, I'm going to wait till 66 and a half so that I can get maximum Social Security payments. And I, I understand that. Hey, we've paid into Social Security our entire lives. Why not use that son of a pup? But Here's my numbers. And I know you guys are looking at the screen right now. At, in 22 years from today, I'll be 65 years old. Now, a lot happened in this particular plan up to this point, but I just want to get you guys excited. What about this retirement plan, my privatized banking retirement plan that you're looking at here? What if I had put in $443,700? That was my contributions and my deposits into this plan for the first 22 years. And now I want to retire. Well, how much money would I hope to have? So I would have 722,392. Actually, that would be the absolute minimum that I would have because there's a lot more money that I would have other than that because I've made money for 22 years outside of this plan by using my money. Because remember, one of those perfect things in that retirement plan that you're not going to find in your IRAs, your 401ks, is liquidity and access to that money. Now, I know some of you are like, well, Chris, I can take loans. Yeah, up to 50,000 or 50%, whichever is greater. I can use all of my money anytime I want in this plan. But that, then when I used that money, I went and made more money in real estate and private investing and private lending. Forget about all that. We're just looking at the raw numbers, okay? 
So I have 722,392 and I put in 443,700. Now I didn't put 443,700 in all at once. Here's how I did it. I put 30,000 in for the first 10 years, okay? 30,000 for the first 10 years, I put 300,000 in. Now, after that, what I did is I put in 60% less. I put in 18,000 from year 10 to year 22 for 12 years. So times 12, that means I put in 216 plus the 300, okay? So now you guys can see that's how I put the money into the plan. So it was 30,000 from years one through 10, and then 60% less after that, which is about $18,000. And now I have 722,000. That's not a bad return. Matter of fact, if we look at the returns on that, look at the very bottom, if we just did a cumulative return, kind of how you'd look at an investment account over a long period of time, you'd say, I put in this much and I have this much, you divide the two, I made 167.3% over 22 years in this plan. Now, some of you are stock investors and you're like, oh, that's terrible. You seem to forget something, although that might be not up to your snuff and your you know, money you're making in the stock market. But remember, I've had access to this money the entire time. So who's to say that I didn't take some of this money out in March, go out and buy a stock like maybe Tesla and ride that thing up? Oh, I'm sorry, I did do that. I had access to this money the entire time. So I could have taken this money and used it to make more money in the stock market and then just got the money back in here. But if I look at the cash on cash return, which now is what is important when I'm retired, I have 265.86% cash on cash, meaning the money I put into this plan in the 22nd year made me 265. So maybe I've lost a few of you at this point, but let's Let's get into this because I wanted to do this training just to show you how you can use privatized banking for your retirement. And it's quite simple. All those years, remember all those years I was putting money into my privatized banking plan. And what is that? Well, most of you already know the infinite banking concept, privatized banking. It's a very specially designed and engineered whole life insurance policy. So I put 30,000 into that plan up to this. So 30, remember, I just want to kind of remind you guys, I put in 30,000 each year, okay, from the age of 43 to the age of, well, to, you know, plus 10 years. So I went 10 years. So 53, but I think it was only 52 because we got to factor some things out. So for 10 years, I put in 30,000. Then after that, what I did is I put 18,000 in from year 11 straight through until whenever I want to stop. Let's just say till 85 years old. And a lot of you are like, well, why would you conti continue putting 18,000 into a plan after you retire? We'll get to that. I'll show you because I know a thing or two about how money works. And boy, I would never stop putting into my privatized banking retirement plan, my slurp. Okay. So then what I want to do is when I retire, I want to take income, right? I want to live. I want to just take money out and go do what I want to do, work how I want. I want to live my perfect day every day. Now, this plan, and this is just one of my plans, bear in mind, and I only put 30000 in per year for 10 years and then 18 after that. This is just one of my plans. I have seven of these. So, but for most of you, ten thousand or $100,000 a year might not be a bad income. Would it be a bad income if you didn't have to pay tax on that hundred grand? What if we could take that hundred thousand dollars out, okay, as loans or withdrawals? And that's what it says. We could take withdrawals out up to the basis, which is the amount that I put in, and then we take loans so we maintain a tax free status. So, therefore, my hundred thousand dollars coming out of my retirement plan pays me tax free. So, every year, I'm taking this money out 100% tax-free. And remember, when we were designing our perfect retirement plan, wasn't tax-free a big part of that? And some of you are thinking, yeah, Chris, but I can get that with a Roth IRA. Indeed, you can. And a Roth is a great retirement vehicle. But a Roth IRA doesn't give you liquidity and access to just go in and use that money anytime you want. There's rules. Sometimes IRS penalties. Sometimes you can only take you know up to the amount that you put in after five years. There's different rules that you got to play. In my plan? My slurp retirement plan here, I don't really have any rules. Just when I want to take the money, I can borrow the money as, as a loan from my plan. Okay, I can borrow the money from the insurance company at a rate of 5%. Remember what my cumulative return was? 167. 
my cash on cash return that year was in the 200 range. So you just got to subtract five from that 200 and some percent because I got to give the insurance company back five of it. So they're letting me use money anytime I want at a low rate of 5%. I don't have to ask or get permission from the insurance company. I just click a button and they give me the money that I've put into the plan plus the interest and dividends that have accumulated over time. But now some of you, you want to get into the deeper numbers, right? You might want to really see all the money that I made over the course of the entire time. Because remember what I said, I said, I have access to my money. Do you have access to your 401k? How about do you have access to your self-directed IRA? Maybe, but you can't use it in self-dealing situations. Do you have access to that Roth IRA anytime you want to use it? Do you have access to that, all the retirement plans that you have? The answer is sort of, but not really, okay? Mine, I had access. So in the first year of my plan, or I'm sorry, yeah, this was the first year. I put money in, I put 30 in, I took 25 out and I loaned that money out as a private loan and I made 12%. So first year I made three grand, okay? That's above and beyond the numbers that we looked at a second ago. I made 3,000 there, okay? Then the private loan number two, I took 50 grand out and I loaned it out at 9%. That means I made $4,500 in interest by using my money, by using my privatized banking slurp retirement funds. And I'm doing that now, folks. These are things that I'm doing today, okay? Then I can buy a car. Holy cow, can you use your retirement account to buy a car? Well, sort of you can, up to 50,000, but could you buy a $63,000 Porsche? No. And I did that and I bought Larissa's Porsche at, and I, try, I just paid myself back. Instead of paying somebody else, okay, the $1,040 a month, I pay myself back 1,040. It's the same thing. I just don't give a traditional bank my money. I give myself my money. So in that one, I made $1,040 net there. So over the course of this time, then I can, I can fund Vivi's college out of my retirement, novel idea. So in doing that, I can also charge myself the same interest rate that maybe she would pay on student loans. So over the course of time, because I had access to use this money, unlike a regular retirement account that I don't have un, by, you know, uninterrupted ability to use that money, I can use my money anytime I want. And by doing that, just over these couple examples here, I picked up and made 14,140 plus, plus the interest and dividends that I showed you on the prior screen, plus all that gain, right? Remember my plan grew up to 700 from wherever it was, 167 cumulative return. That's on top of the 14,140. And that's only me showing a few examples, folks. I could have used that money the whole time. So here it is. Here's what my slurp retirement plan looks like. And I apologize, I messed the numbers up. It wasn't 18, it was 12,000. So my mistake, I used the wrong number, but hey, it doesn't really make a difference. I put in 30,000 for 10 years. Now I know it's 29.9, let's not get hung up over $100, I'm showing the numbers. And here's how much money I have in my plan. So remember, by the time I retire right down here, 64, I'm only putting 12,000 in. And I have, at that start of retirement right here, 722,000. And what I was going to do is that, remember, I was going to take about 100000 out each year. I'm going to show you that in a second. But here the, here's the thing. Just in interest in dividends, I made 43000 that year. Just in interest in dividends, I made forty-five the second year. 47, 50, 52, 54. So you can see this is the money that I'm making in interest in dividends. But let's just go to the guarantee. Everybody's like, well, you said, Chris, you said that I wanted one of the perfect things for the retirement was a guaranteed growth. Great. Well, the only thing not guaranteed in those numbers we just looked at was the dividend. So let's get rid of the dividend. So over here, you can see this is my guaranteed cash growth. So this year I made 19, I made 20, I made 21 down here, 22. I made an overall 22.6% return on my money over the course of all these years till I'm 73. Here I made 113% cumulative return. I put in 658 and I took in here, I would have, or I'd sorry, I made 658. I only put in 539 over the course of 73 years. Here guaranteed I was 658. Do you know a place where you can guarantee that kind of growth? Anyone on here know over the course of this many years that where you can get a guaranteed 22% cumulative? Maybe you do. And if you do, awesome. 
Well, that's what I got. And I had access to my money the whole time. Didn't have to lock it up in CDs. And oh no, didn't have to lock it up in those terrible annuity things that we hear so much about. Didn't have to lock it up in a 401k or anything. Nope. I had the ability to use all this money, all of this money up here, every penny of this money, I had the ability to use it for 22 years until I decided I wanted to retire. So you can just see their numbers. But now let's go to another one. I wanna really kind of now show you what this really looks like when I'm gonna start retiring. So let me close my screen down here. So are you guys understanding what I'm showing you here? If not, we have lots of videos that show this. I'm just trying to give you an idea of options, of things that you can do in your life, okay? Things you can do in your life that will allow you to not only take back control of your money, to have access to your money, to guarantee 4% or a portion of your money, to give that money back, to be able to take that money out and use it potentially tax-free and to provide a legacy. I mean, all these things are part of what I'm talking about with this, what people quote unquote call, this is what I would call my perfect retirement plan. And they don't think it exists. And I assure you it does. And now let's get into the actual numbers because I told somebody that I would do this training for them and I meant it. And that's what I'm doing here. So let's go right into this. So here we go. It's coming up on the screen now. Let me grab my handy dandy little pen here. I want you guys to look at this is that same plan. Okay. But what I did now is I fast forwarded it right to the retirement year. This is year 23. I'm 66 years old. Now, does it, do I have to wait till 66 to retire? No, I could retire anytime with this plan. I don't have to wait till the government says 59 and a half is the magic number, or I don't have to take out equal and substantial distributions if I want to retire before 59 and a half. I'm in control of my money. Therefore, I control how and when and, and whatever I do with the money anytime I want. No one tells me what I can do, how I can do it, or what penalties I have to pay for taking my money out. I'm in control. So here we go, age 66. Now, a lot of people would give me gripe about, you know, why would you continue putting money in to your retirement? I don't want to keep funding my retirement plan into retirement. Right, right. I understand that. So why don't you just keep putting money in a savings account? Because you know what? Most people that I know in retirement, they, they take an income, but all their money and their savings and their extra money goes into a savings account. And who's winning in that? Are you? Is the, is the bank paying you enough interest on your savings or checking account or even those, those awesome CDs out there? Are they paying you enough interest on those vehicles to keep pace with inflation? Oh, bear in mind, inflation is pegged at right around 3.2%. So are you making 3.2%? I didn't think so. You're still saving money in retirement. So people look at this and they think, well, why would I keep making deposits? Because you're already doing it. So, and the other reason is just, let's just do the math on this, right? We could just do the math. And what I'll do is I'll go back to another screen and I'll show you the math. So make sure you guys remember, we're going to look at the math of why I would do that. But here, let's just focus just on the numbers, right? Now I said a hundred thousand, but this example, what I'm doing is I'm going to take 93,000. Why? Because I, I kept a little bit of money back because I'm going to take some loans from my account. And I'm going to take some loans from my account. And when I take a loan from my cash value, which is over here, when I take a loan from this, I got to give 5% to the insurance company. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take that 5% and I'm just going to kind of hold that back. So I'm really thinking I'm taking a hundred, but I'm just holding a little bit back for that 5% interest I got to pay. Now, some of you are like, well, I don't have to pay. I don't have to take loans from my 401k. I don't have to take loans from my IRA. No, no, no. You're right. You don't. You just have to give the government anywhere between 15 and 40% in taxes, right? Remember, this is tax free. So 5% back to the insurance company. And that's, that's like you only having to pay 5% taxes. How many of you would be okay paying a tax rate of 5%? Every one of you would, don't lie to yourself. You know, every single one of you would be okay paying 5%. So what we're gonna do is we're just gonna hold back a little bit of money and we're just gonna give the insurance company 5%. Now the 93 might not account for that. I'm not doing the math, but just over time it would. So I'm taking 93,000 out tax-free. So let's just look at this. How much money did I take out of this plan? 93,000 and how many years is that? So we're gonna do 57 years in. So I do this till I'm age 100. I don't know if I'll make it that far. So that's 34 years. 34 years at $93,000 is I took out. So 93 
There we go. There's, there's how much money I'm taking tax free. Okay. And I did that for 34 years till I'm age 100. As you can see, the numbers are right there on the screen, folks. Age 100, right down there. Okay, I take it out. And oh, by the way, I got some money left over too. So I take out 3.162 million dollars. Okay, 93,000 for 34 years. That's how much money I take out. But then let's look at how much money did I have to put in? And now I'm gonna over-exaggerate. I'm gonna do 30,000 times the 10 years. Okay, so we got that, that's 300,000. And then let's see, so 10 years, I started this at 44. So 44 minus 66 means that's 22 years there. So the 11th year to the 23rd year, that's 12 times 12,000. Okay. That's 144 that I did. And then I retire myself. And then in retirement, I keep putting the 12,000 in. So we'll go, let's see, 100 minus 67. That's 33 years times 12,000. So let's just add this up. How much money did I actually contribute to this plan? And I, I, you guys can correct my math if I'm wrong. I might be off by a little bit, but if anything, I'm over-exaggerating this. So I'm just doing this real quick. There was an easier way to do this, but it's a little late for that now. And let's see, I, that is the right number. How much money did I put into this plan from the very beginning? Okay, remember I took out 3.162 million, just right here. I took more out earlier, but I put it back. I put in 840,000. So my total contributions into this plan were 840 every year. So from age 44, which I'm 43 now, but it advances me ahead to my next age, okay? Because that's how this works. I can't do half years until age 100, 44 to age 100, my contribution to my slurp retirement plan was 840,000. And I had the ability to use that money the entire time. And I had guarantees on my money. Did I not? I showed you that before. And I was able to take that money out tax free. And I had to pay the insurance company 5% interest on the loans I was taking. So I just built in less money. Instead of taking 100, I took 93 because I built in a buffer for that 5%. And then I took out $3.162 million and I had liquidity and access to use this money the entire time. Every step of the way, I was able to use that money, folks. So when we actually look at this, we have to really look at it for what it truly is. It is a silly, specially designed and engineered whole life insurance policy commonly called privatized banking. And what we did is in that earlier years, what I was doing is I was using this, I was using this, but I was only using it in a sense of where I was moving my money. I was doing the infinite banking concept. That's exactly what I was doing. Now, remember earlier, I told you, why would I keep putting that money in? So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna pull that last plan design up, okay? That one where I showed all the numbers and I showed kind of the returns and everything. Let's go back and revisit some of those numbers from earlier, shall we? Because I know some of you watched those numbers I just showed and you forgot some of the most important things I showed. Now this, and let me just bring the screen in full. So here we go, there we go. You guys got it, sorry, there's a little bit of a lag on it. So remember, these were my retirement years. Same numbers, okay? Up to this point, up to 65, I'd put 443 in. I had 722, that was a cumulative return over that time of 167. And my cash on cash was 265. This is where it gets important. So cash on cash return. Every year, how much money am I making on my money? That's really what I care about, okay? Every year I care about how much money I'm making on the plan. So hold on, let me, let me just get to the right slide here. All right, that's how we're gonna do it there. We're gonna move the money. And hang on, let me just get to that. There it is. It's easier if I just do it this way. Let's just do some math here, folks. Remember, why would I put money in after I retire? So here we are, okay? 66 straight on through. And this only goes to 73. I just showed you all the way to 100. And if I put in 12,000 this year, okay? If I just you know don't put the money in my bank account and I put it back into my privatized bank, Okay, not, not their bank, I put it in my bank. 
how much money did I make that year? Well, remember over here, this is your projected cash flow per year. So if I put 12,000 in when I'm 66 years old, my 12,000 made me that year, my gross return, which all we did here, folks, I don't want you guys to think I'm pulling any wool over anyone's eyes. Just do the math. 268, 268, or I'm sorry, 768, 268, right there, this number. Why don't you do that? Okay, 768, 268. I bet you my calculator is cooler than yours because it's pink. Okay, and then you subtract the year before, which is 722, 392. That means 45,000. Oh, darn. I already gave you that number. Hey, I was just showing you how to do the math, right? So we made 45,876 that year. But wait a second, I deposited 12,000. So we got to subtract $12,000 from that. That's not fair to say I made 45 because I put 12,000 in. So no, I actually made 33. The net amount was 33,876. So now we got a very important question to ask you. How many of you, I, I want you to, this is, this is important. I want you to really, really think about this folks. How many of you would give me $12,000 if in 30 days from today, I gave you back 33,876? How many of you, come on, raise your hands. How many of you would give me 12 if I gave you 33,876 back, okay? Oh, but there's risk with that. There is, there's a dividend. Holy cow, we can't do that. Hold on, let's do this again. Okay, okay, let's try this one. How many of you would give me $12,000 if I guaranteed you back 20,279? So now you're guaranteed to get 20,279 back for just giving me 12. And, and I can do this in 30 days. Or if the dividend actually gets paid, I'll give you 45,876. How many of you would not give me the 12,000 for a guaranteed 20? None of you. Great. How many of you would not give me the 12,000 if I gave you 45,876 back? Okay. How many of you wouldn't give two craps whether I gave you 20 or 45 or anywhere there in between because it's more than 12? Do you understand what I just explained? A lot of you would think, well, why would I keep making deposits into my retirement plan, my slurp plan, if I'm retired and I don't want to save more money? And I said earlier, because you're already doing it, most people aren't getting the retirement money and then spending 100% of it. The rest of it sits in a bank account. Well, this is where the rest of it sits. And I will make sure that 12,000 makes it in there because of what I just said, but let's go to 73. Now, remember before that number was 20,000 or 45. Now it's 73, more time has gone by. So I've made more uninterrupted compound interest. So how many of you would give me 12,000 if I gave you back 22? How many of you would give me 12,000? And that's guaranteed. How many of you would give me 12,000 if I gave you back 61,000? Can you go into your bank and give your traditional bank $12,000? Come back in 12 months, we'll, we'll go a full year, come back in 12 months and your bank gives you 61,545 back. And you say, no, 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 I think, I think the bank made a mistake. I, I think, you know, you guys must have screwed something up because I only deposited 12,000 at the beginning of the year and you just gave me 61,000. Are you sure you're looking at the right account? And the banker looks back at you and says, Mr. Noggle, this is your account. You've been earning uninterrupted compound interest now for 30 years. Yes, 61,545 is the number that because we, we paid you a dividend, but your guaranteed growth on that, we would have, if we just got rid of the dividend, that would have been 22,160, Mr. Noggle. So would you like 21 or 22,160, Mr. Noggle? Or would you like the 61,545? Here's your card. You see what I'm saying, folks? This is as close as you're going to get to the perfect retirement plan that people describe to me. And you know what this thing is? You know what this fancy dancy little spreadsheet is here? Can anyone guess? Because I said it a bunch of times. Any of you that said that this is a whole life insurance policy, you are absolutely correct, but you don't and probably have never seen a whole life insurance policy that allowed you in the first year to put in 30 and take out 27. So I guess it would be safe to say that this is not a normal whole life. This is a specially designed and engineered whole life insurance policy from a mutually owned insurance company that pays dividends. Okay, sorry, it's the and they pay dividends. So that is what we do. So I hope this helps explain a little bit about what your retirement could look like. And I'm not saying this is the silver bullet, folks. 
This is just another arrow in your quiver. This is just another tool you can use to supplement your retirement. But for some of you, you'll look at this and say, well, Chris, if this is really how this works, I don't need any of those other fancy 401ks or IRAs. But for some of you, you already have one of those. So clearly, let's use what you already have. But moving forward, you just might want to consider learning a little bit about privatized banking, a little bit about SLURP, Supplemental Life Insurance Retirement Planning, because that is precisely what I just showed you. And I did it in, I don't know, 15, 20 minutes there. I hope you guys enjoyed that because that right there is how my retirement will look. And remember what I said? That is one of seven of my privatized banking policies. So my retirement doesn't look like what you just saw. It looks like that. And then six more on top. So folks, I hope you enjoyed this little training on retirement planning about the perfect retirement plan. Now, this might not hit all your perfect parts of your retirement plan, but you know what? It hits quite a few of them. And by the way, if I ever graduate too early in this plan, graduate means if I die too early, my family gets a nice tax-free death benefit paid to them for a lot more than what the numbers were I just showed you. So folks, have a good day and we'll be seeing you soon. If you guys want to check more of this out, subscribe to my YouTube channel at The Chris Noggle. And that is it. We'll see you soon.